Hello and welcome to my, to my talk. Uh, my name is uh, Andrea Zanchetti and uh, I am an associate professor at Politecnico di Milano. So in, in this talk, which is entitled Combining Speed and Separation Monitoring uh, with Power and Force Limiting for Safe Collaborative Robotics Application, I will go through uh, the details of the paper um, which aims to combine the, um, the two typical um, methods that we have to enforce safety in a collaborative robotics application. So let's start with the motivation behind this work. So if we look at, uh, at current standards that we have uh, for uh, uh, maintaining safety in a working environment where both humans and robots are, are present, well, there are two major possibilities. One is speed and separation monitoring, and the other one is power and force limiting. Well, for speed and separation monitor, we, we need to guarantee that the robot velocity is related to the distance between the robot itself and the human worker, so that at any time uh, the robot actuation system, so the controller, is able to uh, reduce the speed, so in case of a possible contact, that happens at zero speed which means that the robot is capable at every time uh, to come to a complete stop before coming in contact with the human. Well, in turn, uh, power and force limiting allows the robot actually to come in contact with the human worker with not zero velocities. The major limitation is regarding the amount of kinetic energy that the robot can possibly transfer to, uh, to the human worker. And that has to be monitored, and of course that depends on the mass of the robot and on the velocity squared. And the controller must um, monitor this quantity, and, um, and, spe and especially it has to, to guarantee that this quantity does not exceed a predefined threshold. Well, let's have a look at, um, at a more formal description of the two methods that we mentioned. So let's start with speed and separation monitoring. So what we have here on top of this slide is a representation where we have human and robots that at current time instant are separated by a certain uh, distance uh, that we indicate with D. Well, the velocity of the robot must be, must be consistent uh, with the inequality that we have on the right hand side. Uh, which says that the velocity of the robot in the direction of the worker must be less than the distance divided by TB, which stands for the breaking time of the robot, which is exactly the quantity uh, that we know from standards, uh, which is the time that the robot needs uh, to come to a complete stop. Well, if we look at this formula, we can use that to uh, use the maximum available velocity, VR, uh, uh, with this uh, inequality satisfied in the boundary by just monitoring the distance. And uh, from this fact, it comes the name of speed and separation monitoring. Uh, in case we have a smaller distance, we have to decrease the velocity. And this is why we call this monitoring, as we monitor the uh, separating distance and based on this quantity we increase or reduce the velocity of the robot depending on this distance. Well the second method is the power and force limiting. So here we don't have to, to monitor the distance. We assume that the uh, worker is always uh, in the proximity of the robot but we need to guarantee that in case they come into contact well the kinetic energy that the robot uh, transfer, transfer, uh, transfers to the human is bounded by a certain quantity that depends on the border region, uh, basically, and the corresponding biomechanical uh, characteristics. Here we need to, to bound uh, the robot velocity depending basically of the maximum force that the human body or the specific part of the human body can tolerate uh, which is this F max, the corresponding stiffness of the, um, of the corresponding uh, body part and the mass of the robot essentially. Uh, well, if you see this quantity does not depend on the distance, and of course, 
because we we have to ensure that the impact that can occur is safe uh, to a certain uh, to a certain extent. Here we just have to limit uh, the maximum robot velocity in all directions, and this is uh, why here we have the absolute value of the robot velocity vr, and this value is uh, computed depending on the body part, the mass of the robot and the stiffness. So if we plot the two inequalities uh, in this distance versus velocity chart, what you see here on the left is the speed uh, separation monitoring representation. So when the velocity is positive, which means that the robot is traveling towards the human, we have to limit uh, by this um, uh, line with this the slope is distance over breaking time which means that the far that the fire the human is the uh, the uh, the faster the robot on the right you have the uh, representation of the power and force limiting criterion which says that no matter the distance the velocity of the robot should be bounded so if we now just oppose the two charts, what we see is that at a smaller distance, where well, clearly the power and force limiting approach outperforms the speed and separation monitoring, which means that Y and speed and separation, in, uh, separation monitoring robot at small distance is more or less still, while well, the power and force limiting robot can actually work. If we look at the higher distances on, on the right hand side of this chart, we clearly see that the speed and separation monitoring is outperforming the, speed, the power and force limiting approach, which means that uh, a robot that is far away from the human can actually go faster uh, if we uh, monitor uh, the distance between the human and the robot. And from this chart, it comes the idea of combining the two. So the, the question is, can we mix the two approaches? Because there is no approach that is strictly outperforming the other. Here we have the two extreme points of the link, R A and R B, and uh, the, the point obstacle R obst. And let's consider one point on the robot, which is R S. Clearly this can be parameterized in terms of a linear combination of the two extreme points. But for this, uh, we need to enforce the, the mixed criterion, which uh, can be written in this form with this inequality. Uh, where on the left hand side we have the projected velocity uh, of the robot along the uh, distant segment between um, the point obstacle and the point of the robot. On the right hand side we have two terms. The one is the speed and separation monitoring component, uh, which is distance over breaking time. And the right hand side, uh, the second component on the right hand side is the power and force limiting component, where we have identified within the square root uh, the um, equivalent in inertia of the robot, uh, which is characterized by those two Jacobians and the inertia matrix B, and still in the direction uh, towards the point obstacle. So that is the constraint that we have to satisfy in order to mix the two approaches. And if we further develop the calculation of the quantities that are within the right hand side and the left hand side parts, uh, we end up with this um, uh, equivalent inequality, uh, which is alpha 0 plus alpha 1 s plus alpha 2 s squared less than uh, a certain constant c which is f max divided by the square root of k times that square root. So we have a parabola uh, function uh, which is that alpha um, uh, function uh, times s and s square and so on uh, which is which must be less than a certain quantity uh, which is that square root. So the first possibility is that the maximum of the parabola which by the way has a lower concavity, uh, well the maximum of the parabola is negative, so it is surely less than a square root quantity, and there's no problem in this case. The second, which is in the center, uh, happens when the roots of the parabola are both uh, within 0 and 1, and the second is when the two are outside the range 0, 1. 
Well, depending on those three cases, we are able to understand whether or not the constraint is satisfied or violated. And with this uh, Boolean quantity, we can adjust the robot velocity so to have the maximum velocity still satisfy the constraint. This is exactly how the, um, the method works and of course you can find further details in the paper. So we have validated this method within an experimental setup that you can see here uh, in the left hand side picture. And specifically, we first um, run a series of simulations to, to understand how the, the method works uh, with respect to the other methods, which are the separate uh, methods, the speed and separation monitoring and the power and force limiting. So here in the picture, you see the traveling time uh, for the same path um, under the same uh, environmental constraints, so position of obstacles, um, depending on the method that we use. Clearly, you see that the power and force limiting is the slowest one uh, because we have um, a, a fixed threshold on robot velocity regardless of the vicinity uh, of a possible obstacle, which doesn't have to be uh, monitored. Uh, then we have the speed and separation monitoring. And then uh, the fastest method is the, the mixed method that we have introduced in this paper. And of course, the, uh, the nominal trajectory uh, in case of no obstacle is uh, way faster than the other three. So from this picture, we can clearly see uh, that the method that we developed outperforms uh, the two separate methods, which are the speed and separation monitoring and the power and force limiting. So in order to better quantify um, the benefit of this mixed approach, we have introduced a metric uh, which is this eta value, which is the velocity of the end effector of the robot VR divided by the distance. Clearly, the higher uh, this number, the better in terms of productivity, even at small distances. So what you see here on the left is the distribution of the value uh, in the three separate cases, which are the power force limiting, which uh, where we can see that smaller, uh, smallest value are dominating. Uh, when we, where we have also the speed and separation monitoring, where we have the intermediate value dominating uh, the distribution, and the mixed uh, approach, which is which is the one introduced in this paper, uh, which actually has uh, um, all possible values. On the right hand side, you see the same distributions uh, as, as represented in terms of box plots. So what you see is that the uh, mixed method, so the power and force limiting plus the speed and separation monitoring approach is clearly outperform the others, uh, which are the speed and separation monitoring and the power and force limiting. So in this paper, we have shown how to combine uh, two methods uh, to enforce safety uh, during human-robot collaboration. One is the speed and separation monitoring and the other one is the speed and separation limiting. We have shown that combining the two methods uh, we can take the benefits of both and um, develop a method to enforce safety that outperforms the two other methods as taken separately. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation and uh, of course I'm available for any question if you want to uh, send me an email. Thank you.